Hello there. This is a cheap multimeter I got a while ago and it does have one flaw with it. It's actually the only reason why I don't use this one too often and today I want to fix that. So it's a good example of something that somebody didn't think about when they programmed this that every time you switch ranges it beeps quite loud every single range chain anytime it thinks about going to sleep and also when you press the buttons it's mainly the range change that's really annoying and i have two options here though because i cannot reprogram the multimeter i can only either disable the speaker or quiet it down so it sort of depends on what's inside on the route i take and i'm not sure i, I think maybe quieting it down quite a bit probably be the best solution. At the same time, if I have to, I'm just going to remove the speaker because at least I'll use this. I won't be able to use the continuity buzzer, but that's okay. I don't mind that. But what I do mind is it making that really loud audible noise every time I switch to ranges, which I find not too appealing. And I think, you know, if you're using this a lot, I could see that being rather annoying and not fun to deal with. So that being said, we'll take this part and see what it looks like and see what we'll do. I'm not sure. Kind of an adventure and which solution we'll go with. Just depends what we see inside. Like I said, ideally I could reprogram it uh, if it was possible so it didn't beep every time you did something. But that's not an option because it's not programmable for me. But it's not my go-to meter that I use for videos a lot because of the noise. I mean, it goes to sleep fairly fast and there's this big audible tone at random times, which isn't pleasant. Then you make more beeps if you want to change ranges to keep it awake or whatever. So not the best option. Uh, but it's something that if you're designing an item to think about, because nuisance alarms or nuisance noises, uh, people tend to disable like I'm doing it now, actually. <laughs> It's a similar thing. You don't want, you know, the smoke alarms going off a lot. You don't really want people disabling that. So you do want to keep in mind how much of a nuisance your design is. And I think in some cases it's just an afterthought. It wasn't thought through all that well. It's funny, these batteries are still good. I haven't replaced them for quite a long time. Uh, let's see. Let come apart. It's coming out, but it's slow. Oh. Let me get something a little beefier in here. There we go. Okay, sometimes you need the heft of the bigger tool. Okay, so, okay, it's board-mounted buzzer, which unfortunately for this guy probably means I'm just going to remove it. You could stuff something in the piece of buzzer area to quiet it down. You could add a resistor in series to quiet it down, but I think given the way it's built, I'll put some tape over it. And we'll see if that quiets it down enough. If it doesn't... I'm going to pull it out. So let's see. That's well, still pretty loud. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out. And that's going to be my favorite method here. I could pour glue in there, but I still don't think it's going to quiet it down enough. Yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four, five screws here, and then these clips to pull off the board here. Yeah. I, my preference might have been to use a resistor, but because of the way it's bounded, I don't really want to go through that kind of hassle. You'd have to cut a trace and then maybe if you can fit a resistor on the other side of the board. Or I suppose you could, you know, depending on where it's getting its ground connection, you could cut it and maybe solder in over this side. Uh, that's an option, but without pulling the speaker off there to see how the traces are set up, I don't know for sure. All I know is 
this is getting done because that's the only reason I don't use this meter much is because of the noise. It's just too annoying. You know, like, you can hear it from the other room. It's too loud. Definitely too loud. So I am not a fan. So we'll go ahead and unclip the board. Oops. We'll go ahead and put pull these batteries out. Don't want them for now. I mean, I might change my mind partway through, but I don't know. I'm leaning towards removing it right now. Kind of a challenge to pull it off and not snap it back in. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oops. Oh, so wonderful. Uh, yeah. There is some uh, grease on the PCB there for the um, controls. Something to keep in mind, and I did. I did lose one of these somewhere. Oh, here it is right here. One's here, one's on the board. Okay. Just slip those back in there for now. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna try not to get grease everywhere. And of course, I've got to take off the display because uh, that's on the opposite side of my little piezo buzzer there, so. I didn't want to remove it, but it looks like I'm going to have to if I want to do this. The other option would be to rip that off, which is mm, be a little brutal. Highly recommend using tools to push that out. All right. Hopefully I don't break this in the process. We'll see. Definitely hurt my hand in the process. So well, hmm. just laying the glass on um, something that's fairly soft, so I won't scratch up the or mock up the uh, LCD display there. And this is just the backlight board here. And this is a little more mm, more than I had in mind, but that's okay. It is what it is. So be it. So these are my speaker points here and yeah without taking everything off I can't really tell where they go so I think I'm just going to stick with the idea of removing this uh, buzzer and just get rid of it so I'll turn on my soldering iron so I'll lay a little fresh solder on these two points I think and then I'll work on pulling out the speaker there adding the um Leaded tin solder helps lower the melting point of the solder so it's more easily removed. I can either try a solder sucker or I can uh, also use some uh, solder wick. I think I'll go the solder sucker route first. So let's see how much luck we have here. Wait, they cut those off pretty flat, so I don't have much leg sticking out here. I might have to pull as I heat it up. Okay, there we go. It is removed. Not the most preferable way, but they did they did seem to chop those off pretty close to the board edge there, so you do what you have to do. So yeah, what you'd want to do if you wanted to quiet it down, and I don't think I have the patience for it right now, but um, you could cut off that trace and then add a resistor in, or it looks like it looks like there may be a little surface mount. Keep in mind, you only have so much room to work with here on the side this is mounted on. So really, 
Your best bet, if you want to quiet down, would probably be replacing this inline resistor here. I cannot see. Let's see. It looks like a 510, which would be, I think, 51 ohms, if I'm correct. Let me double check that with another multimeter. Fairly certain that'd be 51 ohm. 51 or 510. I can't remember off the top of my head. 51 ohm. Okay, yeah, so 51 ohm resistor. For me right now, I don't have the patience. I'd have to swap that out. But if you if you took that out and sort of played with it and tweaked the value there, you could probably quiet it down to something more reasonable level. Let's call that good. So I'll let's tin the tip of my soldering iron. And turn that off. Okay, get that snapped back together. The nice thing is this frame pretty much aligns everything, so then it snaps in here at the bottom, so it aligns the zebra strip quite nicely, so this should work. Okay, so what I will do for right now, I, yeah, I mean, that's the trouble with multimeters. You sort of have to put them back together all the way, and that's why I'm not opting to put a resistor in line with that. I'm just going to put the batteries in and make sure it works. Uh, this case you got to be a little careful of because it's just held on by the two wires, so there's not a lot of supporting it. So you don't want to tug on it too much. Okay. Screen works. No more beeps for me, so that makes me happy. So what I need to do now, uh, let's put all these little screws back in. So yeah, ultimately you got to figure out um, how far you want to go with something. In this case, because this is uh, not my primary meter, like if I'm doing a lot of continuity stuff, I use this one anyways because it's uh, a bit faster. So yeah. I'm not too worried about the continuity buzzer on this thing. Well, I just got to remember that it has no sound. All right, so now that I've got it all back together, that is nice and quiet, and it will not make any noise any longer, which is fine by me. I'm happy with that, so I'll use this more on the bench. I like it because it's compact and small, but that uh, beeping just was really annoying because if you imagine it beeping every time you change the dial here beeping gets rather old rather quickly so that's that it's okay ultimately i just wanted to silence this uh, making it quieter would have been more ideal solution still not the perfect solution um, but it's it's worth thinking about when you make things what the effects of noise is so yeah, and in this case, I believe with whoever made and designed this meter, it was sort of an afterthought. You know, maybe some people like it, I don't know. But me, I didn't like it, so it's removed. But yeah, it's nice to modify something to where you like it. And like I said, I'll go, I'll grab this more now because 
it doesn't make any noise. I don't have to worry about somebody in another room hearing it and asking what that noise is. That's how audible it was. So just to give you an idea. Anyways, hope that was enjoyable. And that's just a little modification to this meter. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.